Hi everyone, this video is project number six and it has everything to do with the video that I recently posted on the viewfinder. And just FYI, the images that you've been seeing are some of the images that I selected from the viewfinder video. So the project is to take images that I got from the viewfinder video and turn them into something else. Pick some, do thumbnail sketches of them, and then narrow the list down a little. The ones I'm more interested in, take a few of those and refine them just a little bit. And when I say refine, I don't mean really refine. I mean just develop them a little bit further to see which ones I really want to do. And in this video, I'm sharing with you what I have done. The images that I selected from the viewfinder video and my rough pencil thumbnails and how I took those thumbnails and evolved them into something a little bit different. I really hope that you'll try this project. It's absolutely awesome. It's kind of mind stretching. It's just a lot of fun. Yes, I use the fun word. So this project is unlike the others in that there really isn't a finished piece. This is more of a concept project, more of a stretching of your artistic self project. But at any rate, it is pretty eye-opening in a good way. Now it is possible, I've been pondering, taking a final image, one of the ones that I've been working on, and doing it to completion and possibly doing two versions of it that are totally different. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe. Sounds like a good idea, I think. First, let's look at an image that I have up now. These are little thumbnails. They're all on one eight and a half by 11, so you know they're really small. Anyway, the first one is one of the first sets of leaves, and it's kind of hard to make out. Like I said, these were really quick sketches. The next one were the bricks. After that was that gorgeous landscape. I took one of the little sections of it, and same for the next one. It's just a different section. Below that, number five, another set of leaves. This one's a lot harder to decipher because I just went in really fast and shaded it. The next one is bark from that tree. After that is that one dried little weed. And number eight is the bottom part of a pillar. Nine and ten are both some of those little pieces of gravel. Eleven is part of a dried weed. And twelve, some more bricks. Okay, so I went in and I quickly did a few of these and I wanted to share those with you. But please do not judge my art on this because when I say quickly, I mean quickly. The art's not good, but it's the concept I'm wanting to show you, okay? Okay. On this first image on the left is my rough little thumbnail of the leaves that are on the right. If you look at the lines, they're not a perfect match, but you can definitely see the similarities. Okay, so what I am going to do is I'm in Photoshop and I am just very, very quickly going to transform this for you so you can see how you can start off with some beautiful leaves and then when your imagination kicks in you can have it evolve into something totally different not leaves at all but like I said please do not judge the quality of the art here I'm like speeding this along so this video won't take forever what I am doing is I'm going in with uh, kind of an olive green brush and going over the basic shape of this thing. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. You're going to know what it is in about a minute, unless you can already guess. And maybe you can. I don't know. But you can see over on the right side where I'm kind of pointing it out and on the left side going in and coloring it. And I have put this on a faster speed so it won't take so long to do. Okay. But other than the quality of the artwork, I thought you might like to see how it evolves into this thing. And to me, it was really actually kind of a surprise. I did not foresee it coming at all initially. And I'm hoping by showing you this that it will give you the desire to go and try some of this on your own. Because it's really neat to see how your imagination can turn a lovely group of leaves into something that you would never expect yourself. It's just fun. 
So, I guess by now, you're starting to get a really good idea of what this is evolving into. You can't help it. That forked tongue and those teeth. Uh-huh. Now, I really had no idea that this was going to evolve into a snake. I typically do not draw snakes. Nothing against them. I just don't do it. But when I saw the way the shapes lined up behind that leaf that is closest to you, it just looked like the body of a snake that was kind of wrapped around. And I thought, oh, well, let's give it a go. And so I did. So this is what I'm trying to tell you is a lot of fun. You go take out your viewfinder. You gather some images. You come back. You do some rough sketches. And then you look at them and you play with them. And oftentimes you will come up with something that you never thought you would. Sometimes it's representational, like this, you know, a snake is representational. And sometimes it'll be abstract, non-objective. It just varies greatly. That's about it for this one. So if you're ready, we'll go on to the next. All right, on this image, this is one of the ones from that gorgeous landscape. And what I'm doing with it is I'm keeping it close to the same, definitely representational. It is changing because I'm adding more sky, fewer leaves, changing the colors a bit. So I'm taking the actual image and just manipulating it a little bit to be something more that I had envisioned. However, once again, don't look at the artwork because it's really, really rough. Now, I have gone in and taken the bark and the limbs and spent time on that, developing them so they look a little more three-dimensional, a little more rounded. They aren't close to being finished yet, but they have been worked a lot more. When I got to the leaves, I just super fast put some marks in there and then stopped because I was at like 18 minutes into that and I thought oh dear can't do that so I just roughed in the leaves really fast tossed in a little bit of sky and called it good but this will still give you an idea of how you can take an image that you like but that you want to change and how to work it a little bit some of the changes I did on that were kind of subtle but if you compared the two you'll see some very obvious changes. And like I said, I got the bark kind of pretty well worked out, but the leaves, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I just wanted this video to be less than like six hours. Okay, on to the next. Okay, now on to the gravel. I was excited about doing the gravel. To me, it looks really full of potential. Just think of all the things you could create out of that. Like the doodles, dangles, entangles, abstract. There's just so many things. But I really didn't think I would get what I got. And yes, I'm going to leave that as a surprise. You'll find out in just a few minutes. At any rate, I just laid it out and you can see where this big rock is on the kind of bottom right quadrant for the most part. That was my main focus. And so I drew its outline. I didn't shade it in, but I started noticing as I was playing with it that it kind of had a humanoid profile. Didn't really look human, but sort of, kind of. Anyway, I decided that I might try to focus on that part a little bit. And there are so many other things that you could do with this, believe it or not. It's one of the most creative ones of the bunch, I think. But anyway, as I drew, a story started coming to me. <laughs> but now I have to pause for just a second to let you know that, yes, I wondered if I had gone over some deep, dark edge. Because no matter how creative I think the gravel is, that in itself is kind of strange, I surely didn't think that I was going to come up with this story. But that is what happened. And just FYI, I wasn't under the influence of anything other than my sweet tea. I guess when I said the viewfinder images 
had a real potential for creativity. I wasn't kidding. Okay, back we go. What the story was, was that there was a man and those little other rocks on the left reminded me kind of like if you were under the canopy of a tree, the little pieces of shade and sun. That's, I don't know why, but that's what it struck me as. So what I decided to do was to make this human as if he were under a tree's canopy or behind a bunch of leaves and he is peeking out or looking out from behind the leaves. Now why that came to me, I don't really know. It's just I started with a rock <laughs> and it evolved. So this one actually ended up with a story or at least the beginnings of a story. Why was this man peeking out from behind the leaves. I don't know how I got that out of a little pile of gravel, but I did. Also, just a reminder that this is a concept project, not a how perfect my art is project. So again, try not to pay too much attention to the art part. I was not at all trying to make a really great quality image. It was still in a developmental stage, okay? So don't grade me on the art. Now when you use your viewfinder, so far we have covered a few different types. One was almost the same as what the little viewfinder image was. One turned from a group of leaves into a snake <laughs> and this one turned from a pile of gravel into a man peeking out from behind a bunch of leaves. Now I know I'm not the only one who can do this. I think it's really worth giving it a try because it stretches that artistic part of your brain. It lets a lot of creativity come forward. Just thought you'd like to know that. So back to what I was saying. When you do something like this, instead of just conceive out of the air, which is, you know, what I usually do, it gives you the basic shapes. So it's kind of like you have parameters that you sort of have to stay within. So it kind of stretches your creativity a little in that respect, you know, because you have parameters, you have to stay within them, at least some of them. And it allows your mind to create in a different way. But it really is worth trying this. It's a lot of fun and obviously you can get some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> Just look at what I created. Oh, by the way, those are the shadows that some of the limbs and leaves are making on him. Okay. Well now, that felt kind of like a mental workout, but in a good way. I hope you really got something out of this, especially inspiration. So if you like this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, subscribe, I would love it, and hit the bell notification to be notified of future videos. So let's summarize real quick here. First thing you do is take your viewfinder or viewfinders out and find some images that you're intrigued by that you like. Bring them back. Do some really rough sketches, just little thumbnails of the ones that you like. Select one or more of those that you want to refine or take a little further. And then out of those, if you do pick more than one, refine that yet again and narrow it down to one or two that you want to do. Once you're there, then you need to figure out if you want to create a realistic image from the thumbnail or if you want to create something that's more abstract or somewhere between the two or how you want to go forward. Once you have that done, then take it to finish and see what you get. Now something I think that would be a lot of fun to do, I kind of mentioned this earlier and I probably will do this, is do two of them of the same image. Do one that's abstract and one that's a little bit more well, it doesn't even really have to be like the image in the viewfinder as long as you use the same shapes and see what you can come up with that's different. I think it would be a really fun project to do as well as kind of eye-opening and using your artistic brain in a little bit of a different way, which is always good to stretch it out a little. That just didn't sound right. I don't know why. And if you do 
this project. I would really appreciate it if you'd let me know how it goes, if you enjoyed it, what you think about it, and if you'd like to share your images, I would really love to see them. And also, at the end of the 30 projects, if I can gather enough images, I will make a collage video, which I think will be so cool. Now, here is a question for you. Can viewfinders lead to greater creativity? I would say yes, not necessarily all-encompassing, but definitely yes in a different kind of way. There are many things that can be inspirational or spark that creative part of you. So I think the viewfinders are an awesome tool, and at least for me, especially if you want to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Just, wow. But yeah, I think my answer would be yes, conditionally. How's that? And the reason I say that is because you have to use different thought processes and you have some set parameters that you need to follow some. So back to yes conditionally, especially if you are having like artist block or, you know, a hard time finding what it is that you're wanting to do. I think there are many other methods to get that creative spark going and this is one of them and I think this is an awesome one. So I think viewfinders and this process absolutely rock. It is a lot of fun, extremely creative, and it can make your brain hurt if you're not used to stretching it out a little. One more thing I would like to add is I really truly believe that this could be an awesome form of art therapy. I mean, look at my snake and my gray man, <laughs> you know. But what exactly is that saying about me? I'm really just kidding about that. But, you know, if you're needing an emotional release, etc., there's all kinds of reasons why. But getting out and finding some image and then turning it into what's going on inside of you, I think would be really helpful. What do you think? Do you think it would be? I'd love to know. So please post your answers in the comments section below. And that's all there is for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful time. Talk to you again soon. Much love. Olivia.